London life. Welcome to my favourite moments from our time with the staff at Liverpool, John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> the Holiday Airport. Afternoon. With two bars, nine eateries, 12 shops, and even a beauty salon, Liverpool Airport isn't short of entertainment. Oh, I'm flying to Limoges today to see my partner. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Airport beautician Jade wouldn't want to work anywhere else. It sort of just grabs you in and then doesn't let go because you enjoy yourself that much and the time just flies. For staff, both front of house and behind the scenes, it's about making sure the customers have a good time. Thanks very much, thank you. But after three years next to each other on the information desk, Mark and Alan, well, don't always see eye to eye. Passenger announcement. The passenger gardener requiring assistance travelling to Jersey. Please make yourself known to a member of staff at gate two. Your tan, your voice is limp. What's that mean? It's very limp, it's very, you know, I'll go if you want to. You sound like a Dalek. I do not sound like a Dalek. You do? I do not. Get on this plane or we will exterminate you. Normally, an oasis of calm, during the Grand National Weekend, Duty Free played host to a deranged jockey. Hello there, good morning. Hi, would you like a spray of pony? My name's Hilary and I've worked in the Duty Free shop about five years. Would you like a spray, madam? I'm, I'm dressed up today for the Grand National, which is a very big thing in Liverpool, and people come from all over the world to it. And um, I'm number two, Hilly Philly. <laughs> Hillary's mission was to whip up racing fever. Hello, madam, would you like a spray? In an attempt to flog more perfume. Spray, it's lovely. It's pony, it's gorgeous. But with a name like that, it was never going to be an easy ride. Would you like a spray? I would. No. Have you backed a horse with the Grand National, sir? No? Oh, dear. Staff at Liverpool John Lennon Airport pull out all the stops to make sure everyone's holiday gets off in style. But with 100 flights landing and taking off every day, their main job is to keep their passengers safe in the skies. Over there. The start of the holiday period marked the beginning of a busy season for Andrew Hepworth and Trish Hendrick. This time of the year, we get a little bit scatty because of the mating season, as people do in love. Trish has been scaring frisky flocks of lovebirds away from the airport for 15 years, and she knows all the tricks in the book. See, what pigeon can be really dangerous because during high winds, they fly low and in large flocks. So that's a serious issue. Over 1,000 bird strikes are recorded every year in British airports. Right, hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> One small bird sucked into an engine could result in an emergency landing. Let's just put that on. Trish can lure them in with distress calls. She can scare them away with a siren. There's, There's a load, load of birds in the wood pigeons there. Uh, can you see them? I just passed the stack on. And when all else fails... Eh, don't worry, they're not real bullets. In Duty Free, Hilly Philly and her mates were pulling out all the stops to whip up Grand National Fever. <laughs> On your mark, get set, go! Portland's horse fell, but my horse didn't fall, so I'm OK. Yeah, so I made it to the end. <laughs> so I think number two, Hilly Philly won. Hey! Over the Valentine's weekend, there was a new arrival over in the departures hall. 
This is our um, photo booth for Valentine's Day. We've set it up in the terminal, so everyone who's travelling through, families, couples, anyone really who wants to get their photograph taken, um, remember Valentine's Day, remember the start of the holiday, they can get it done here. But before the loved-up passengers could get their snaps, there was some troubleshooting for digital marketing manager Claire Rogerson. It's not printing, though. I wonder why. So... I might have to go and get the manual because I can't remember. As night fell on Grand National Day, Duty Free's Hilly Philly was doing her bit to work up a Grand National betting frenzy. Where are you off to today? Uh, oh, lovely. Have you backed a horse in the Grand National? Yeah, yeah, but I will do Oh, you're going to? What, which one are you going to back? Alcon. The customers have liked me, yes, and they said I look great, and they kept asking me, where's my horse? And I kept saying, where's it's home? I couldn't bring it to the airport. Good eye. This is a new polo, Ralph Lauren. Pony red. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up... I can't see any. Can you see any, Dave? Nuns on the run in departures. If there's any more, we can't find them. And a whole posse of party animals... This is debauch, that is it. Cheers! ...descend on the holiday airport. <laughs> Good afternoon, Liverpool, John Lennon Airport. Can I help you? And let me just put you through one second. How long have you been here now? Um. Well, I've done three Christmases, so three and a half. I was eight years last month. Eight. I'd be yeah. out on remand by now for a serious crime. With the Grand National over, racing fans made their way back through the holiday airport. Really enjoyable weekend. A few of us were winners. Most of us weren't, but I'm up 300 foot I don't care. In duty free, Hillary ditched the jockey costume and was back to sorting lipstick. But her days as Hilly Philly number two had left their mark. When I went home from work, I said to my husband, um, I just need to go to the betting office, I need to put a bet on number two. He said, oh, we're not betting anything on the Grand National. We never win. And then I watched the Grand National and I couldn't believe it. Number two won. He might have been in the doghouse, but over the Valentine's weekend, thousands of loved-up partners were picking up brownie points in duty-free. I was here quite late last night. I saw a lot of men getting last-minute gifts in duty-free. <laughs> the perfume department was very busy. And it was marketing manager Claire's job to make sure everyone's holiday began in the departure hall. Oh, look, they're coming through now. Try not to drop anything. With the photo booth fixed, it was time for a bit of a romance. Although some were, well, <clears throat> more up for it than others. <laughs> and what could be more romantic than a couple celebrating four decades together? <laughs> So what's the secret to a lasting relationship? See as little of each other as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 11,000 passengers a day pass through the doors of John Lennon Airport. But during the holiday season, one special bunch required special assistance from a team of dedicated volunteers. Getting up this time in the morning. Volunteering. Crazy. Out in the car park, airport Ooh. volunteer George waited for a busload of believers on a pilgrimage to the sacred village of Lourdes. The Lourdes flight for them is all about uh, trying to get that little bit of uh, help. With, I, I, don't know what, I don't know whether it's religious or whether it's psychological or what, I don't know. But uh, they go to Lourdes for their own private reasons. We, we help out in whatever way we can. Yeah. Okay. Two bishops, two nuns, some members of the clergy and a group of elderly and sick are heading for the holy waters in the south of France. I'll try, I'll try and get two. Go on, let me get two. Just from here, let me get in there. George and the team of helpers just have to shepherd this flock safely onto their flight. Go on this way. 
bit warmer in here. Okay. Here he comes. There's a coach load just turned up. Right, we've got three check-in desks. You can use any. With 56 passengers in total... They're completely waterproof, don't worry about it. The helpers have a sophisticated technique for keeping tabs on their flock. We just give the people stickers on the lapels and then when they get to the gate, we know we can differentiate between ordinary passengers and the, uh, we call them saints and sinners. <laughs> 150 years ago in Lourdes, the Virgin Mary is said to have appeared and a sacred spring began to flow. Now, four million people journey to the site every year. So what are these pilgrims hoping for? It makes me feel, you know, better than myself. We journey on the pilgrimage, we build up community. Every time I go there, I get something very special from it. I'm just going to get out of the world and charge my batteries, as it were. But can Our Lady of Lords compete with the ladies 95-year-old Lois met on her last trip? I went to see the Lady Boys of Bangkok in Derby, and um, I was treated as a VIP. They gave me a bouquet of flowers, and I had a wonderful time, wonderful evening. The most important asset of the holiday airport is, well, it's not the shops. Duty free, cafes or bars, it's, yeah, that's right. It's the two kilometer stretch of tarmac out on the airfield. A safety officer, Andrew Hepworth, knows only too well. You got no runway, you got no planes, you got no planes, you got no passengers and we're out of a job. Along with engineering manager Dave Batt... He's got a pie there, I suppose. ..a dedicated team of airport staff are going to scour the runway. So uh, it's really important that we maintain and look after it, really. So uh, that's what we're doing today. Last refurbished in 2007 at a cost of £22 million, the 100,000 square metres of tarmac have to be meticulously checked for wear and tear. We're checking from the runway shoulders, which are the outer extremes of the runway, and we're also checking the runway centre line as well. If potholes are allowed to develop and loose debris isn't cleared, landing and departing planes could be put in serious danger. Basically, we're checking the whole paved area from one side to the other. But because of the frequency of the planes, getting on the runway is easier said than done. It's exciting that it's, it's not every day you walk down the runway. It's just it's not exciting waiting around. Finally, there's a gap between flights. <laughs> it's time for this crack team to get their heads down. I've got one of these in my house, landing light. But it looks like not everyone's taking it so seriously. You know what? The, the idea of these runway walks we're really going to take off. <laughs> if they find a defect, it's reported to the maintenance crew. There's just little that, that and that there. There's that starting to break. And there's a highly technical way of measuring the holes. So he's just put his radio down there just to get an idea of size, because obviously we know how big the radio is. That was just a... Just the what? It just was half a radio. A third of a radio. Yeah, a yeah. third of a radio. Halfway down the runway, a dangerous build-up of rubber could make for slippery landings. This is what they call the touchdown zone. This is the, the area that takes the most hammer from an aircraft, so we're, uh, we're just looking at this area a bit more closely. We need to vacate that plane's going to depart. With an aircraft on the approach, there's no time to mess about. Still not found your fiver. Unless your name is Dave Batt. That's a little bit of the runway that we just found. It's Ruth's Christmas present. There we go. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> so, how do you eat yours? Just like... I put it in my mouth and then chew it. Over the Easter weekend at the Holiday Airport, Mark and Alan sized up their treats on the information desk. Do you put it in the fridge? It has to go yeah. in the fridge. This is my fridge. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was where the baby lived. Double loader. Top and bottom. <laughs> A 
as family and friends got together over the Easter weekend, staff really got into the party spirit. <laughs> and on the taster bar in Duty Free, newbie shop assistant Peter was serving it up to the passengers. I started in December and then I just got through straight into the uh, wolf's pit and put on the bar. Watch out! It looks like Paul Peter has a pack of wolves heading straight for him. OK, duty free. Easter is a popular weekend for a particularly rowdy passenger group. During these few days, hundreds of stags and hens pass through departures. All after one thing. 24, mate, may as well. <laughs> so what are we trying? Whiskies, vodkas, gins, I rum? Like I'd like a whiskey. Okay, I've got whiskey. Yeah. Right. Should we just do all the whiskey? All whiskey. Right. All whiskeys. Thank you. Peter's go. job is to tempt this rabble into buying a bottle or two. Yeah. Tell you what, that's well nice. Do you have one for the stag? Where yeah, is it? Oh, come here now. We're going to Poland to Krakow in uh, Poland. There you go, stag. <laughs> we can have someone else after them. 24 of us are going and it is debauch, that is it. That's all I can say about it. No rules. What happens in Poland stays in Poland. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah, we'll buy a bottle of that. You don't want to know what's under the uh, sock? Uh, I think we can guess. Do you want any chocolates? Cheers, mate. I've got chocolates. Oh, what else you got? Scale. I'll distribute these out. Got some Bailey's ones there, you know, more ale. Cheers, Pete. Cheers, later, have a good one. Enjoy. He might not have sold a single item. But at least Peter seems to have tamed this pack of party animals. The best bit about it is uh, getting the stag and hen groups in. Ooh. Just to get a smile on the face, make that holiday start nice and early, get, give them a good feeling, and then off they go. Enjoy all the rest of it and come back with a smile on the face as well. Out on the runway, the flight to Lourdes has arrived, and it was time for Dave and the team of volunteers to round up their flock. So what we're looking to do now is just try and find some people in the, uh, any, any people at all would be ideal, just so we can get some down to gate 30 and, well, I can't see any, can you see any, Dave? What? This is more like herding cats. It's like the OK Corral, we're going to get them all rounded up. It seems that the saints have got round the sophisticated sticker system and are now mixing with the sinners. Just found three more of the kissing gate. Five. Hello there, would you like a sweet? Who's there? Ah, uh, you're welcome. Hello there, would you like a chick? A chick? I was going to say, would you like a chicken? <laughs> I just asked him, would you like a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Over the Easter weekend, spring chickens Jill and Karen were going clucking mad, handing out their body weight in chocolate. Would you like one? But another brood of hens. Well, we'll go for the red berry one. Were more interested in sampling what Peter had to offer. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Here's the bride to be. Back. Come on, Come on. Oh, what is it? Oh. Vodka. Vodka. Is it Come on, bride. Cheers. Cheers. We're going to Barcelona on my hen do. We all try one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And that's enough. <laughs> A little drip. It was actually a surprise, so I didn't know where I was going. Um, and obviously, as you can see, I wasn't aware of the outfit either. Have another one. Will Peter manage to make a sale this time? There we go. <laughs> Is it the raspberry one, that? Yeah, I'll taste it. Thanks. It's awful. Have a nice flight. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. See ya. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Oh. The team of volunteers were still searching in departures. You ladies for Lewis. Yes, we are. Trying to head their holy flock on the flight to Lords. Round them up. And then we get them out. I'll go and see if we can find them. And George still had several more wandering pilgrims to track down. This happens all the time. I'm just wondering whether there's any upstairs in the, um... Well, that's it, we're not going up there, it's no, no, no. Did, did you, did you meet any down the far end? No? Not yet. But there's definitely some missing. Come on, sisters, you're late! 
<laughs> don't make a habit of it. <laughs> right, we found the last four. If there's any more, we can't find them. George has done all he could. We're going to be going through now. Time to get the last stragglers on board. Yep, everything's sorted, everyone's on. So what happened with that sophisticated sticker system? Awkward sometimes, because we were going to elderly people and saying, are you on the Lourdes flight? And they were saying, no. It's, uh, it, it's sort of, what are you asking me for? They were look ill. Uh, anyway, we, we found them all. They're off to Lourdes. Hopefully they'll find what they're looking for. We're all happy, finished. Coming up, staff allow the runway... That would check the fillings out of your teeth. ..to be used as a supercar test track. And the emergency services face a testing time of their own. With 40,000 passengers passing through the doors of the Holiday Airport every day... Information, Mark speaking. ..work never ends for Mark and Alan on the info desk. Passenger announcement with passenger Martin Fillingham. Please return to Burger King. That's passenger Martin Fillingham. Please return to Burger King. Somebody left something behind. You've left your chicken royale. Yeah. I'll have it. Don't. Kills me that we can't get through there. Jersey 903, runway 27, clear to land, between 250 degrees, 14 knots. <laughs> Over 100 aircraft land and take off every day from the two-kilometre long runway at Liverpool Airport. Making a touch and go for runway 27 via golf, land up and wait runway 27 behind. Staff in the control tower and out on the airfield don't just coordinate the movements of the large passenger planes. Helicopters, light aircraft and private jets all vie for their time on the tarmac. But once in a while, another speed machine is waiting in the wings. It's not too bad, not too not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Watch Commander Simon Lyons. It's better than my diesel. <laughs> and Station Manager John Howard. Yeah, I'm glad they don't have to pay the insurance, are they? <laughs> help a local car maker test the latest generation of supercar. Uh, not that John's too impressed. To me, totally impractical. It just... Th those days have gone. I, I like the comfort now. That would, in my opinion, would shake the fillings out of your teeth. And apart from that, at my age, I'd probably have trouble getting in and out of it. <laughs> the makers can't test this 170 mile an hour prototype on the roads, so they've struck a deal with the airport. Tower for Fire Alpha. John and Simon's challenge is to liaise with both staff in the tower. And on the ground to turn the busy airport taxiway into a temporary test track. Would you be able to let us know about any uh, windows we've got? Ten minute window. Thank you. It's a live airfield. So as you can see, there's helicopters taking off as we speak. And then when we get that window opportunity, we'll uh, treat it like brands hatch for a bit. Finding a gap between flights takes some careful choreography. Yeah, that's great, that's great. I'll pass that on to the two test crew. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Get them up by kilo. Get everyone by kilo. I'll just, I'll just brief the fire crews now. Yeah. We've got five minutes of departing aircraft and then we've got a window of probably about 15 where we can carry out a couple of runs, all being well. Okay, kilo now. We're going to move out now. Get everyone to kilo, kilo. the entrance, please. We'll make a start. Waiting on the final all clear, Simon and John lead the convoy to the taxiway. A fire engine and crew wait at either end of the makeshift test track in case of an emergency. Copy that tower, got all the vehicles in position now at the uh, mouth of Kilo, ready for the departing aircraft. Roger, I'll call you in two minutes. Not a fuss for one little car. Let's hope it's all worth it. But a supercar wasn't the only VIP at Liverpool John Lennon this holiday season. Duty manager Steve Freer had to look after some very important passengers indeed. We've got the arrival of Everton Football Club uh, this morning. They're flying out to Bern in Switzerland. 
the, the, the nice thing is that they actually walk through the route where the, where the passengers are. And there's any young children there that we recognise their, their idols. Uh, obviously, they're absolutely made up to, to see them. Steve has nothing but praise for the Everton team, so he is a big fan, right? No, 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 I'm a fan of uh, Liverpool FC. Ah, don't worry, Steve. Your secret's safe with us. The coach is just arriving now with the team on. We'll disembark the coach through this way and then straight up the stairs then to security. Oh, don't you just hate it when your friend buys the same top as you? On the runway, Simon and John were waiting for one last passenger jet to clear. Come on, Turbo, now. Are you happy to commence uh, with the testing? BAC, you're loud and clear. You're OK to carry on with the test. OK to carry on with the test. Copy that. Liverpool John Lennon is about to turn from Top Gun to Top Gear. With 280 brake horsepower, the BAC Mono is a road legal supercar which costs over 100 grand and can go from 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Superstar DJ Dead Mouse and football manager Andreas Villas Boas own them. But John isn't so fussed. I'm sorry, not my thing. <laughs> One, you can't get a suitcase in it, so it can't go away. And if you said it was a babe magnet, you, <laughs> you, you can't get a passenger. No, it's totally <laughs> impractical. See, that just shows the age I've got to now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time for the gallery. <laughs> Waiting for Morph to come out. You don't know who Morph is? Yes. Mm. From, oh, the guy who used to draw the pictures and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. What was he? Dunk -dunk 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 Liverpool, John Lennon Airport, can I help you? No. Bye bye. No, wrong. Uh -uh. I thought I swear it was Art Attack with yeah, Tony no, Hart. It, it was Take Heart with Tony Hart. Oh, shush. Stop being so presenting. During the busy holiday period, staff have to work flat out to keep John Lennon running smoothly. Always go cycling in stilettos. Always. Even those with an office job like Ruth from Planning know that a fit and healthy team means a well-run airport. I hear the opening of the new wellness centre. Uh, that's a gym to you and me. It's nice to see if you could turn out. The gym is free for all staff, and Ruth isn't the only one feeling excited about it. They might be able to tempt me with some young, punky PE instructor. Need to do some of that, mate. So I think I'll be down here putting a few Ks in on this bike. These days, even a porter cabin turned gym needs branding. And for Chief Exec, Andrew Cornish, it's a good excuse to stir up a bit of rivalry. We had a competition um, for the naming of, of this centre. And one of our colleagues in air traffic came up with a, a fantastic name of the Flightality Centre. <laughs> Flightality, get it? <laughs> oh, originality like that is hard to come by. Did you get it from the internet? Um, I may have looked at well, well-being. We'll take that as a yes then, mate. Wherever prize winner Craig got the catchy little title, they loved it so much, they even put it on a ribbon, look. So, a thrilling day for the airport's Keep Fit fans, but as ever, the funny man of the airport, engineering manager Dave Batt, wants to turn things up a notch. I think everyone's quite excited about watching me on the treadmill. Pretty exciting for them all. I haven't brought my Leica in though today, so, uh, so it's a bit disappointing for some of them. In departures, duty manager Steve was escorting the Everton team through to their flight. It's nice and quiet at the moment, so it's, it's the perfect time for them to come through and do a bit of browsing in the shops. Which was exciting for shop assistant Dan marie Being an Everton fan myself, it's, you know, it's always good to see the players. We've got Ross Barkley's just walked through with the guys. Um, I haven't seen Tim Howard at the moment, that's my favourite. Oh, Anne marie you're in for a treat. Is my favourite player now of all time. Well, me goalie. Love, loved him. Loved, loved, love him. Loved him. 
Are you Tim? <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. It's the briefest of brush offs for Anne Marie, but she's made up. That's made me happy, yeah. That's just him. Um, cheered me up for the rest of the day. <laughs> but at the gate, even Tim Howard, one of the most recognisable men in the city, still has to show his passport. Good luck, lads. They won 4 1, by the way. What about this one? Is this just a static one? Right. 5k run. Here we go. That's much harder. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes, engineering manager Dave Batt. Look at that. Professional sportsman. And project manager Mark Rogan were the first to take a gamble on the new gym. <laughs> At 49, Dave is 18 years older than Mark. You need to go a bit faster with that, lad. But that is doing nothing to dent his confidence. Right, then, let's see how this works. He certainly went goal for gobbiness. <sighs> Look at his trying. The lad's trying. Look at him. I'm going to do a 5K run. <laughs> Working out at the gym is just the latest excuse for the boys to get competitive. <laughs> they both captain airport football teams that square off against each other once a week. Whether the new staff gym would have any impact on the scores is anyone's guess. Close. Really close this week, wasn't it? Good game. But for one week at least, it seems that the old dog Dave has triumphed. So it's 1917 to the Reds. I mean, look at me. I do look like a match. The match we colour. Bright red. Aircraft accident, aircraft accident, Embraer 145. But it wasn't all fun and games in the holiday airport. In the depths of the night, emergency services had to race to a major drama. But thankfully, this wasn't a genuine crisis. It was a mocked up disaster designed to test their ability to handle a real accident. Power exercise director, go ahead. John Howard has worked at the airport fire station for 33 years, and it was his job as watch commander to oversee the whole thing. All the emergency procedures at the airport and local authority have been initiated, and this is what you get uh, with the response from all the emergency services. Almost 150 emergency service personnel, including police officers, paramedics and firefighters, took part in the exercise. The setup scenario that they are responding to is a plane crash with 10 fatalities and 40 injured passengers. We don't want to pre plan it that much. So people turn up and just go, oh, right, bump, 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 and away. They've got to make the decisions on the night. Oh, there's two, is there no more? Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Oh, no. I want it to be as realistic as possible without any fatalities. Coming up, whilst holidaymakers take to the skies... Rainbow One, continue down the Alpha Taxi way. ..the airport staff prepare for a distinguished new arrival. Come on. ..and deal with some uninvited guests. I've got a really good joke. Go on. And it's really horny. Where does Carly Minogue get her kebabs from? OK. Adjacent Donovan. <laughs> I'm laughing I told at you. Just... I'm laughing at you, not no, with you. No, that's come on, Jason Donovan. That's good. Um... <laughs> During the mock emergency at the far end of the runway, a car doubled up as wrecked fuselage. Right, so everyone turns left and oh. keep all them on the road down. And a cast of 40 extras have been roped in to give the drill a more realistic feel. Some of the casualties are quite good actors. They do it a lot, and so therefore they will play the part. Uh, some of the guys find that a little bit annoying. <laughs> oh, I'm 
while some of the actors, well, had been ever so slightly miscast. Believe it or not, okay. I four months pregnant. How many is the total? Three. Others seem to have classes in method acting. How long have you been injured for, mate? What time is it now? I don't know. About 10? Uh, about 20 minutes. A few of the extras are specialists in their field and earn a fee for their night of fakery. It's not something you can ask someone to do is just sit in the car while they cut it up around you. It's not, not pleasant. Uh, it can be quite frightening. I've been getting caught out of class for the past eight years now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's not in there. Yeah, What's your real name? Katie. Katie, right? Lovely, lovely accent. <laughs> Four people there. That's yeah. it, yeah. Dramatic rescue drills weren't the only out of the ordinary event to take place at Liverpool John Lennon. On the runway, passengers were treated to the unlikely sight of live tennis. But I don't think anyone at Wimbledon needed to lose sleep over it. It's uh, certainly flat enough. It's, it's obviously a little windy. The brains behind the event was the airport's PR ace, Robin Tudor. The plan is that um, because we're a sponsor of the International Tennis Tournament at Liverpool, um, we're here to do a PR shot. Always the way we like to do something a bit different, a bit quirky, try and get the pitch in the papers. Uh, and we always like to kind of push the boundaries a little bit here at the airport. Pushing those boundaries means getting a photo of airport exec Mark Povel and tennis tournament organiser Anders Borg playing on the runway. Come in. Here we go. Over the net. Who needs to fly from Manchester? I've only can. Fly from Liverpool and play tennis. Well, I'm not sure what you're doing counts as tennis, mate, uh, but 10 out of 10 for effort. Oh, oh the photographer, the ball boy. I think we need to run to, to catch this one. Not content with the risky business of competing on the wrong way, they hoop it onto the grass to bag an eye-catching shot of an aircraft taking off as they play. OK, coming now. It's coming now. Come on. Get that plane in the background! But as any tennis pro will tell you, having 70 tonnes of jet rumbling your way can yes. be a bit off-putting. Yes. Oh! It's not just the passengers who get a smooth ride through the airport. Every day, over 10,000 bags make their way from the check-in desks to the planes on the tarmac. After being tagged at check-in, luggage is sorted by baggage handlers like Barry. Today I'm doing a Tenerife flight. Take the sticker off, and away it goes. Barry's been working here for seven years, and the airport's given him more than just a job. Got a girlfriend who I met in the airport. Been together about two years, two and a half years. Originally worked on a night shift. Uh, obviously the missus worked on a night shift as well. We just got talking and. The rest is history, shall we say. Love's not all Barry's found in the baggage hall. From boats to brass bands, we've had skis, canoes, you name it, we've had it, basically. One of the things that causes a, a problem is stuff that vibrates in the cases, really. Things like toothbrushes, ladies' toys. But we won't go too far into that one. Technology, the more you have, the more goes wrong. So, but like now, you see... I can't even type with these stupid thumb fingers and everything. Fat fingers. Got... You just... Fat fingers. At the helicopter landing pad... Oh, just get me back, out. Safety officer Paul Tart was tasked with waiting for a high-profile arrival. High-tech piece of equipment. He's been marshalling in the stars for over ten years. Not my type of music. And we had Queen in the other week. Um, that was good, seeing Brian May and um, the drummer, Roger Taylor. That was OK, yeah. Freddie Mercury wasn't there, though. <laughs> but Paul isn't letting on who's about to grace his landing pad today. The helicopter will land on the alpha taxiway and then the police on the cavalcade will pick up the VIP and take them back out on the escort. Rainbow one, continue down the Alpha Taxi way, enter the apron via Whiskey, the second on your right. Sir. 
As the chopper arrives, which famous face is hiding behind those blacked out windows? No, before you ask, <laughs> it isn't me. Perhaps it's Harry Styles? Or Jay Z? Or is that a royal crest on the side of the aircraft? Oh, is it Prince Charles? Or Prince William? Or is it Prince Harry? No, it's Prince Edward. The Earl of Wessex was in town to open a new office block. Oh, I've met, I met the Queen as well when we opened up the building a few years ago, the John Lennon big ceremony in Yoko Ono as well. She was, um, she was a battle of laughs as well. <laughs> <laughs> she really was. At the other end of the runway, the bird control team had to deal with a few unexpected arrivals. Just north of the Alpha Taxiway on the south side of Kilo, hold up in attention. Trish and Andrew have been called away from their job scaring off the airport's feathery friends. Alpha 7 Air proceeds to Sulu Tel It was now man's best friend that was threatening to delay passengers' flights. Yes, yeah, so we've just been called by air traffic control. There's a couple of stray dogs that are out on the airfield. No time to pause. Trish has to spring her into action. Come on. With planes waiting to take off, she has to retrieve her, or they'd all be in the... <laughs> oh, come on, throw me a bone. Come on. Good boy, good boy. Oh, it looks like that. <laughs> So someone's pets that have just managed to get onto the airfield. He's a good boy. So sometimes they'll get through a, a hole in the fence there as well and onto the airfield. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Very rare, really. Come here, come here. Good boy, good boy. He wants his little friend. Hey, hello, where's your friend there? Find your head, oh, Trisha. Knock me off. <laughs> 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 really got you anyway, on the So do what you want with them now, Bri. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. So seven A, them two dogs have been caught. Jolly good. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so those are some of my favourite moments with the staff who keep Liverpool John Lennon running. When you next take to the skies, spare a thought for those staff back on the ground who make sure your holiday begins and ends at the airport.